This is the third in a series of three uh, video lectures on properties of exponents. The first one went over the rules and the second one went over some simple examples. In this third case, we'd like to go over some examples that are a little more complicated and specifically they have um, examples with negative exponents. So here's <coughs> example number one. It'll simply say simplify 5x to the minus 2y to the fourth raised to the power of minus 3. Now to start with, you can kind of um, more or less um, ignore the fact that they're negative exponents and just treat them as um, the simple rules. If you look at your rules, rules 1, 2, and 3 here, then you raise something in parentheses to a power. You just raise everything to that power. So that's 5 to the negative 3. x to the minus 2 raised to the minus 3. y to the 4th to the minus 3. And that's the tack I always take with this is I always think, First thing I'm going to do is simplify when you have a, something parentheses to a power, simplify that first. So that's 5 to the minus 3. X. Now this is negative 2 times negative 3, and negative times a negative is a positive, becomes a positive 6. And then it's y to 4 to the negative 3, which is y to the minus 12. And now what you need to think about is you need to think about well, what does it mean to have negative exponents, right? Well, the rule is, is you have a to the minus m. That's 1 over a to the power of m, right? That's the rule. Since that's the rule, let's use that here. This is, I'm going to do this a little clumsily at first just to show you. This is 1 over 5 to the 3rd times x to the 6th times 1 over y to the 12th. I, I don't usually write it like that. Usually the way I think about it is if it's a negative exponent, then it should be in the denominator, unless it's already in the denominator. That's an example. So this should be in the denominator. The x to the 6th is positive, so that's in the numerator. And the y 12th is in the denominator. And if you notice, these are exactly equivalent. So it doesn't necessarily matter which way you think about it. Whatever makes more sense to you. What we end up with is we an x to the 6th is in the numerator. 5 to the 3rd is 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. So it's 125 y to the 12th. And that's your final answer. Right there. That's kind of a warm up. Now we're going to look at some more complicated examples. This one is 3x to the 4th y to the minus 2 over, let's do, actually, let's make this an 8. 8x eight to the 4th, y to the minus 2, over 14x to the minus 2, y to the minus 5. So the very first thing that I'm going to do here is, is actually, there's actually a couple different ways to solve this problem, but I always solve it the same way. What I have is I have um, negative exponents, both in the numerator and the denominator. So first thing that I'm going to do is get rid of the negative exponents. And here's the, the kind of the rule. If you have x to the minus 3, that's 1 over x to the third. Let's say you had 1 over x to the minus 5. What that literally means is 1 over 1 over x to the fifth. But an easier way to think about it is this is simply x to the fifth. So a negative exponent basically means that it's where it shouldn't be. If it's in the numerator and it's a negative exponent, it means it should be in the denominator. But if it's in the denominator and it has a negative exponent, it means it should be in the numerator. So I'm going to rewrite this. And if it has a negative exponent, I'm going to put it where it's not. So that's 8. x to the fourth is a positive numerator, so I'll leave it where it is y to the negative 2, that means it should go in the denominator. Let's go down here, times 14. x to the negative 2, that means it should be where it's not. It's in the denominator, so that means it should go to the numerator. And y to the minus 5 is a negative exponent, so it should go in the numerator, since it's the denominator. So a negative exponent means where it's, it should be where it's not. Now, once you put it where it's not, it's in the right place, so it has a positive exponent. I'm just going to rewrite this for, to make it cleaner. 
That's 8. Let's see. x to the 4th times x to the 4th becomes x to the 6th times y to the 5th. And here you have 14y squared. I'm going to see if there's anything that I can simplify. Um, here we have... It looks like here we have an 18, I mean an 8 and a 14, 2 goes into both of those. So that becomes, let's see, what 2, that becomes a 4, and that becomes a 7. And then the y is simplified, y5 over y2, the, the y2 on bottom cancels, and the y5 becomes a y to the third. Right? There's nothing more complicated than this. 8 over 14. 2 goes into both of them. So that's 4 times 2 and 7 times 2. And the 2's cancel. So it becomes 4 over 7. It's not part of the problem. It's part of the explanation. And then you have y to the 5th over y squared is simply y3. Because there's 5 minus 2 y to 3. And your final answer here is... 4, x to the 6th, y to the 3rd, over 7. And that's your final answer. And that's how you simplify exponents using the property of exponents.